Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be looking at another new precious piece of mine. This one I'm very excited to share with you. She is a black and green, can we just say Slytherin queen, dress that I believe is from about 1858 to 1860. I will be fully honest with you guys, this is not the strongest period for me. Like this is probably the biggest black hole timeline for me, especially in the 19th century, because as I've been really honest with you guys on this channel, I actually don't really like this time period. I It's never been a particular favorite of mine. <laughs> I've never really spent a lot of time researching it, but when this piece came available from Witchy Vintage, I obviously, I had to get it because it's, it's a really beautiful piece. So I was doing some research this morning before filming this video to kind of make sure I was I was a little bit more confident in my dating of this dress. And it honestly looks like it's basically 1860. It could be a little bit into the late 1850s. It could possibly go into 1861, but it's right there at that decade point of 59 to 60 from all the visual references that I can see. One of the reasons why I'm so excited to share this gown with you all is because of its size. And I was super excited to buy this gown because of its size. So the waistline on this dress is 33 inches. And that's obviously gonna be a slightly corseted waist because at this point in time, women were wearing corsets as a part of their day to day. And this time period too, corsets like 1860, 1850, there is some reduction, but it's not what the reduction that we see later on in the Victorian era and early Edwardian era, but still we're looking at a 33 inch waist here. So with that, let's start looking at her, huh? Let's check her out. Okay, so first things first, this dress is actually super accessible. It is center front opening with buttons. The skirt is not exactly center front closing. It is actually canted off just a little bit to the side. So this is one part of the dress that was a little confusing until we actually started really looking at it. And that is because, and I've actually put a pin in here to kind of help better illustrate how it works because some of the stitching here has come undone for the pleat. And so it didn't make a lot of sense, but there's a really big hook here and there is an eye that's actually hidden kind of between the bodice and the skirts, just ever so slightly on the inside, that when you hook that together and you can kind of tuck that under, that little bit. The opening is basically very well hidden in the stripes. Bodice just slightly goes over that and she buttons up the front and you can't really tell because of the way the pleats are set up. So it's a really great ingenious opening and closing setup there. It's super easy to use and very obviously accessible for people. She also has a belt, a beautiful ribbon belt that is still intact. And the obviously there's no buckle, but the ribbon itself is still there. And so you would have a ribbon then that goes over around the waist and that would actually hide any sort of awkward closure issues that we have going on there, which is really handy. Two darts at the front bodice section. Both of them actually have pieces of whalebone in the darts themselves. Um, it's very similar to the 1860s bodices that we looked at from the beautiful like watered moire silk gown that we looked at last time. So same kind of construction, just little tiny bones there. I guess just to kind of help, you know, just give a little bit of structure there, not a lot. No other boning on the buttonhole side. On the button side, there is an additional piece of boning to help give a, a further structure. The darts have been let out at least once. There's some scarring in the first dart on both sides. So that first dart here was let out about, in total it'd be about a half inch, but a quarter inch on each side for both. So she's been let out just in the darts alone. We do also have darting at the bust to help shape over the bust. And then she actually has some really interesting darts around her neck here to help, I guess, smooth out that curve. So she has a really interesting curvature, curving dart up here in the neckline section. Again, you don't see that in the silk. So what this says is that the lining was fit to the body first, and then we got a nice perfect shape with the lining and then the silk was cut out to fit over top of that. And you see this a lot. And it makes a lot of sense too because then you're not dealing with fitting the silk and the lining. It's a total pain in the tuckus. Like I have done it, I do not like it. I really like this method. And you see actually the evidence of this method being practiced throughout the 18th century as well as the 19th century that you fit the lining to the body and then you build everything over top of that. A lot easier to work with, less risk at putting the very expensive textile to like be damaged 
damaged or ruined or messed up or cut wrong because brown cotton, brown linen, that doesn't cost very much. A silk like this, this can be expensive. So we wanna make sure that we're as careful with our cutting as possible with the silk garment. So we do the fitting on the lining, we make the mistakes with the lining, and then from there, we build it out with the silk. Oh, there's actually another one there. There's darts all over this thing. There's darts at the back too, just really tiny shoulder darts, like we're just right there to help give a little bit of shaping. We are dart city over here, dang. And a nice big long dart at the center back as well. Holy sweat stains, Batman. Ooh, goodness. She was roasty toasty. The other thing I love about this gown is that she has been altered and let out, not only at the dart, but at the sides by a lot. So that 31 inch measurement, that is not a original measurement that has been an adjusted to fit measurement. It could be because of weight gain, body changes. It could be because of pregnancy. We don't know. She was let out a great, great deal. But even then her original seam allowances were pretty beefy at the side seams here. And they did a really good job actually piecing this in. So this is not a slapdash kind of adjustment. You can see that there's been distinct pattern matching in this. And so that is really quite lovely. And so a lot of care has been taken to make sure this still looks really, really good. The fabric that they used was just a cotton sateen to fill it in. So obviously this was done at, at a later date with a different fabric for the lining and it just kind of holds its space. It was hand stitched in. It was not machine sewn. It was actually hand back stitched in kind of quickly. The pattern matching is really good, but the stitching on the inside is pretty rough, but it's definitely hand sewn, just spaced back stitches. Well, it was basted and then it was back stitched and they did not pick the basting out. <laughs> they had to reset the sleeves and everything. Like they actually did a lot of work to readjust this fit. If you are someone who is dealing with size fluctuation and trying to change and hell, I'm honestly telling my own self this at this point, I can go back and rewatch this video. Darts focus on easy ways to adjust, but the side seams are usually where it's at. Though in the Edwardian era and late Victorian, you do see some interesting things happening in the center front, but that's a different video for a different day. Now let's actually move on because this confused me for the longest time when I first got it. And then it was either Chrissy or Nicole pointed out to me what was actually going on. So the back of this gown, the lining is actually one piece. From side seam to side seam, it's one big piece. And then it has a dart at the center back. But you see the lines of beautiful curve stitching from the outside because the outside piece is a separate piece. This is just decorative stitching. The silk is cut out of multiple pieces to curve around the side there, but it's not actually the same in the lining. So the stitch line that we see, that's actually just the top stitching. It's mostly a decorative effect because obviously we know that the lining is where all the fitting actually is. The silk is done for visual effect. And so that's what that stitch is. I was really confused. I was like, what is this line? Like, where are the seams? I don't understand. The darts are hand stitched with spaced back stitches. The darts in the front are done with the sewing machine, but these really tiny ones around the garment are done by hand. They're not done by machine, which makes sense because they're teeny weeny. The neckline is piped and it's a high necked collar. And I love this effect with the piping. So what you do with the piping is you fold your raw edge over and of the gown and you just kind of base that in. And then you take the piping, you lay that over it. You stitch that to the outside, obviously. I like to just use applique stitches from the outside so that way I can hide my stitching and then it, all the traveling's on the inside. And then you take the raw edge of the piping and you fold that up and then you hem that down so it has a really nice clean finish. I just love that. I think it's a the center front, the button side and the buttonhole side, those were cut on the selvage edge. They just folded the selvage edge over and they stitched that down on both sides. And the belt obviously would cover it up, but it has this cute little watch pocket just right here at the waist, which is adorable. We have loads and loads of seam allowance. So the skirt is fully lined in a glazed cotton and it's like all the way down. And then, yeah, and there's no additional layering at the hem. It's just one completely flat lined in the glazed cotton. And then it has been pleated to fit the bodice. The edges were then folded over and then it was whipped to the bodice. And then the raw edges of the skirt are pressed down. And then the bodice edges are kind of a mass, but mostly it looks like they would have been pressed down too to kind of cover up any additional raw edges. But that's actually a really nice clean finish. Ooh, it's a little bulky there though. The silk is with the the cotton, it's really bulky.
Are you guys ready for, for some like relatable historical costume or sewing moments? The lining for the sleeve, not the lining for the sleeve, hold on. The arm's eye of the bodice was not deep enough into the arm's eye and so they've kind of had to catch it and then what they did is they pieced in some lining with the piping section for the sleeve and they've stitched that in so that's all been back stitched in or space back stitch actually but then the additional bit of fabric here for the lining that wasn't long enough they've actually herringbone stitched that to the lining itself and so that's how they've caught it shoulders seams are huge they've been adjusted a little bit up in here it looks like they were stitched by hand with another spaced back stitch. Pretty thin thread, to be honest, not very thick. The sleeves are a mess, which makes me always feel so much better about everything. But they're back stitched into place. Kind of looks like they might have been spaced back stitched. We do have a couple of pleats, which at the top of the shoulder for some shaping. They're lined in a glazed cotton that's different than other cottons which is great. The sweat stains have gone through and have discolored the green, so yellow is showing. The sleeves are actually faced in a lovely little black silk at the opening, uh, probably about like six to eight to 10 inches in some places, it depends on where in the sleeve. And they are this lovely bell-shaped sleeve with beautiful velvet green trim around the edge. The sleeves have also been pieced and they are also cut on the bias because of how they wrap around the arm. These sleeves, oh, there's a raw edge in here. Thank you. Ooh, the lining was pieced too. Ugh. Gosh, what a mess. Spaced back stitches for the sleeve construction, okay? And they're just left raw on the inside. They haven't done anything to finish them. This would have been worn with under sleeves. I think we can confirm that this dress was made with a lot of care and a lot of thought. Um, the dressmaker who made this obviously was concerned about pattern matching, was, where in a lot of cases, as we've seen, the dressmaker can kind of be like, poof, I don't care, whatever, get it? I believe, if I remember correctly, there might be another pocket. Oh yes, there is another pocket. This dress also, so we have a watch pocket on the left side, and then on the right side, there is a big old honking pocket. Jeez, this thing's huge. It has some facing, some covering, hand stitched in, beautiful, well done, okay. Obviously, when the skirt's lined, it's kind of hard to see how they stitched it. Let me see. From what I can tell is the skirt was hand stitched. <laughs> you know, I, honestly, that I would probably do the same, especially at this point in time. The silk is expensive. It's a really nice silk. Obviously there's a lot of care and there's huge rectangular panels in this thing. And if you were ever gonna remake this, you want to be able to pick it apart really, really quickly. And machine stitch stuff with its tiny holes, you have a lot of scarring. Where if you do hand sewing and you're doing say a running back stitch, you're not gonna have as much scarring. It's going to work a lot better in so many ways. It's gonna be easier to pick out and remake in the future. So I, I totally get why they did that. Also, the hem on this thing is just bound in a narrow tape. About four stitches to the inch or so. They're really tiny running stitches. Let's just see how many panels we have in this thing. Yep, that's about right. So about 20 inch wide silk panels. We're going to assume that it's selvage to selvage. This is definitely a selvage edge. And that's a selvage edge. So yeah, we're looking at like 20 inch wide panels or so. Yep, all right. So it is made up of eight panels, selvage to selvage at about 19 inches wide. I'm gonna get my phone, I'll tell you all how big that is here in a second. Hundred and fifty-two inches. Very easy, straightforward construction. The pleats are mostly what we would wanna call knife pleats today, and they're very, very deep because 152 inches gathered into 33 inches. And so we're gonna have very deep, full pleats, then you add the cotton to that for extra body and structure. It's gonna have a lot of loft, it's gonna have a lot of volume. You put the right petticoats underneath of it, a round hoop, we're gonna have a great deal of volume and it's gonna look fantastic. All right, let's flip her over so we can have a look at the back. What they did for the back 
piece is they used a panel, basically selvage to selvage because the arms eye point to the arms eye point, since it's a dropped shoulder, is almost 19 inches. So they were able to cut the back piece out of one selvage to selvage inch wide. So they kind of went, okay, there's the shoulders, cut out the neckline here, we do that that way, and we'll put it together and it'll be great. So that's how they did the back. There's no seam up the back, it's smooth at the back. All we have are the curved side seams of that faux side back piece. Ha! So when they let out the side seams of this garment, it looks like they had to take the piping out in the back of the arm's eye. And so you can see where the piping ends on both pieces. And it's basically in the same place-ish. And then there's no piping around like the back half of the bodice. So the, and the piping just stops. They didn't even try to hide that. Like you can see the cotton cord coming out, which is hysterically funny to me. That's something that they obviously had to do to adjust the fit of this when they let it out. Oh God, they, they did such a good job with this really. Oh, let's talk about the fabric real fast because this is a really beautiful fabric. The ground of it's basically taffeta, silk taffeta and black. And then it has two woven stripes into it in variations of green and black. One's a more solid green with narrow black satin weave stripes. And then the other one has a figured stripe on the inside, a very geometric with a satin weave to it. And the stripes are about, what, about an inch wide or so? And so this silk is beautiful. It's blushes. It has a nice weight to it. It doesn't feel cheap. Cheap. It doesn't look cheap. And with the amount of care that they've taken in redoing everything and matching everything, you can tell it wasn't a cheap fabric. But it's a beautiful silk. And you know, funnily enough, you actually start to see a lot of black and green at this time period. I kept noticing it when I was looking at originals and looking at fashion plates, this kind of black and green combination, which personally I think is a great look. It's, it's a great color combination. That's it guys. Pretty simple dress, very beautiful dress, and obviously a dress that I think we all can kind of imagine ourselves wearing. And obviously it was worn by a woman who really took a lot of care in her appearance and really valued her clothes and took care of them. And now I am the lucky uh, owner of it. And so she is going to live with me and I'm sure you all will see her again in other projects and adventures and things like that. And with that, I will see you all next time. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your week and uh, yeah, till then.